Well, good afternoon. It's the afternoon of the second day, so we're down to the, uh, the die-hard members of the audience. Um, but I think this should be well worthwhile. I'm here with Ekaterina Petalina, who is the Deputy President and Chairman of BTB24, which is the retail arm of Russia's second largest bank. Um, Ekaterina, maybe to start really with the, the general overview of your target market in terms of geography and the, the client type that you focus on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Philip, uh, I just would, I'm, I love that we start the retail part of the forum because I think retail is the most exciting uh, part of uh, banking in general. And uh, to start about talking about VTB Group strategy in retail, I, I want just to stay state that we want more of retail, we want to grow retail as the share of VTB's business, and we want to grow our share of the market in Russia. The reason is very simple, retail is just more profitable, it provides uh, better R ROE comparing to other businesses. For example, now retail business for VTB Group is less than 25% of assets, but over 60% of pre-tax profit. So less than 25% assets, over 60% of pre-tax profit. That speaks for itself. And uh, the target numbers for VTB Group for 2016, that's the horizon for our, the time horizon for our strategy, is 18% uh, in loans and 12% in deposits for individuals, and it's 9% uh, um, it's, uh, in deposits and about 9% in loans for <coughs> small business, which is also considered retail in uh, VTB Group. Our currently, uh, the uh, our share of uh, loans that we have as a group is 14% uh, for individuals, and the share we have in deposits is a little over 9%. So the target is uh, pretty aggressive. As I said, we want to continue developing our market share, and, and we believe that it's now still the time to grow your customer base and to grow your market share. Uh, because, uh, you know, I heard a lot of complaints that the market is not growing as fast, the margins are shrinking, yes, but the glass is so half full. <laughs> it's just like so half full. Because listen to what we are talking about. We are saying the market is slowing down. You know, retail used to grow 40% a year, now it's only 27, how bad? You know, <laughs> and you know, the margins are shrinking. Yes, it's not, uh, you know, 10% anymore, it's seven. It's still very, very healthy margin. It's still very, very healthy growth. So I think you know that there are, it's important to participate in this market. It's important to grow your share, and and, and that's why for us our, we we put very high uh, profitability targets. We want retail business in Russia to make a hundred billion rubles in 2016, which is a big number, and we wanted to produce ROE not less than 25 percent, which again a very a very ambitious target. But at the same time, we say market share is our target and having 20 million clients is our target. In the beginning of 2013, our number of clients was 12 million, billion people. Now it's already 13 plus. And uh, by the end of our, uh, 2016, we want to have 20 million. So we, we believe these three years are very important in capturing the client base and capturing the market share. Because then the market will indeed slow down <laughs> and then it will be more difficult to, to fight uh, for, for your piece of this pie. Well, that's, that's great. I mean with such sort of ambitious growth targets um, and aiming at such a large, audi large audience without um, hitting the margins, presumably customer segmentation is going to become increasingly important for the bank as well. Segmentation is, is, is the key now and, and, and the reason is very, very clear. Um, if you compare BTB24 target, BTB24 client base, and you compare the lowest segment and the highest segment, the difference in our income that we would make, net operating income, would be 30 times on this particular kind of client, average client from the lowest segment, average client from the highest segment. And even if you take mass client and affluent clients, the difference would be four times, three, four times in operating income we make. So it's extremely important not to waste resources on wrong clients and to serve well the right clients. Otherwise, you just, you, just uh, you, know, you don't deliver the profitability. So uh, for us, this strategy is about uh, making the right service model for each of the segments and, and getting the most from each of the segments by combining you know, serving the clients and their interests and their needs 
and managing our <coughs> costs and our resources. We take it a little bit to the extreme as, as a group, because for example, for service and the low mass and mass segment, we launched a separate project, a consumer finance project called Letterbank. It's uh, been already a year, and uh, you know, if you if you have any questions, I'll uh, happy to you know deliver details on that one. <laughs> yeah, I guess definitely. Let's let's touch on that in a moment. I guess just first of all, um, in terms of that, you know, getting the revenues from cloud, are you looking at um, non-interest income as well as in yes, income and how to build the, the fee and commission base? Definitely, definitely. So, and um, um, an interesting story that the fee and commission income again differs from segment to segment and the source of interest income also differs from segment to segment. But uh, we are lucky in Russia again because even affluent segments in Russia, they borrow. They are younger compared to Europe. They are uh, more open to using digital channels and all this stuff. And uh, they, are, they, take, uh, they, they use credit. They, they are still at early stage of their life, so they need mortgages, they need auto loans, they need consumer loans. They are, they are much more profitable actually <laughs> comparing to the average European affluent uh, people because they are, only, you know, they are only using savings products, insurance products and, and, and such. So for us, interest income is still, it's still very important even, even in, the, in the upper segments. Um, and, and an interesting thing actually about the segments, um, we did a very thorough analysis on uh, uh, profit pools of different segments in Russia and what it showed is that during the last three years from 2009 let's say to 2012 we saw a very high growth of mass and low mass segments and you also saw the rise of uh, bank monoliner banks and consumer finance banks because uh, this was the segment that was coming from unbanked to bankable and uh, it delivered huge growth but during the next three years, we believe it will be the time for affluent segment again. Upper mass and affluent are getting, you know, are, are getting the rise. And uh, they will increase their share from about 30% of uh, profit pool overall for banks in Russia to about 40% of the profit pool. So, so it's, a, it's, a very important, it's a very important segment and we, we are gonna focus on this segment, which is, uh, you know, nice and easy for us because it, it has always been a core segment for BTP24. Mm. So how did the launch of Lietopang fit in with the strategy and why did you choose to go for a separate brand for that uh, segment? Um, as, as, uh, as I said, we, we, uh, we took a, a, an extreme way, if you wish, but our, a mass and low mass segment is always not less than 25 to 30% of bank, bank's profit pool, like overall for the market. And VTB Group's share in this profit pool was very low. We were always skewed towards the affluent segments, and it, it was our strategy. It just it not it didn't just happen, but at the same time, we didn't want to miss that opportunity of the mass segment. And uh, we were thinking uh, for quite some time if it should be launched within VTB24 or it should be launched as a separate legal entity. And we decided to go with a separate legal entity because it it does require a separate network. It does require a separate product set. It does require specific risk procedures. It does require specific IT systems. And it, it's better if it uses a different brand. Mm -hmm. So that VTB24 brand stands for affluent and Lita stands for mass. So for us, uh, the decision was, you know, why not a separate legal entity if we need so many separate and special things in order to be able to achieve profitability working on this segment comparing to achieve profitability working on affluent segments. So that's, that's the story. You touched there on the question of IT. How important is um, technology for developing the customer segmentation and developing the client base and, and revenues from the client base? For segmentation, IT is only important with regard to MIS systems. Because like, if, you, if you want to do segmentation, if you want to build different service models for different segments, you need to understand how much money you're making on this segment and how much uh, cost this segment generates, so and how much risk this segment generates. So it, it's only important from an MIT perspective. But from, um, from just doing business perspective, technology, of course, is very important. Um, I, I read somewhere, and I, 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 have loved, I love this thought now, um, it took radio 30 plus years to reach 50 million people. It took Facebook two years. And if, it, if Facebook was the country, 
it would be the third largest country in the world. Can you imagine? And you know, we are here talking about banking, but people are not talking about banking. Banking is just a part of their everyday needs. It's a part of their everyday life. So uh, you know, if people use internet, banks should be there. People use their smartphones, banks should be there. It's not, you know, it's not thinking about banking. It's thinking about how people live and where they, you know, shop for services. Not only banking services, just services uh, in general. And there, and the trends are, are very clear. The trends are switching to direct channels, switching to digital channels, uh, doing more of self-service. People like it actually. Or um, maybe uh, are also expecting services to be available 24/7 where you want them at the time you want them. Um, maybe the number of interactions, of course, is increasing. People are checking their balances more often. People are doing small little payments more often because they're not required to go to the branch anymore. They can do it very conveniently at, at their desk or you know at their mobile phone. So we should just we should just make sure that we are there where people are and they're. Uh, I remember from one of the survey, the service that we had, the client answered, like, if it's not on my iPad, it doesn't exist for me. <laughs> Just as easy as that. If it's not on my iPad, I don't know that this thing even exists. So your bank should be in his iPad. <laughs> Otherwise, he's not with your bank. And there, here, of course, IT is very important. And I must say that uh, here it's more difficult for banks comparing to non-banking uh, participants of this segment to, to make sure that they are up to speed, to make sure that they're developing you know, together with the market and not, uh, not uh, uh, slowing down. Because of course we have regulators all over <laughs> around us, we have our own IT systems that are pretty complex and pretty tough. You know, when you have 13 million clients like we do, you cannot do anything manually, you, you just can't. So if you're developing new product, new services, it should be already integrating. But, but you have to be there, you have to do it. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, it's not like you're losing money because these new services are a fraction of what we make on our traditional services and traditional products. It's not more than five, seven percent. But at the same time, if some banks provide these services, like our electronic payments or like mobile wallets and things like that, they provide and you don't, then clients are moving with their mortgages, with their credit cards, with their deposits, with their payments, and this is what you cannot afford. You, you, you have to uh, make sure that you are there, that you are a modern bank, that you are a cool bank, and that people, it's convenient to use your services. So in this respect, mm -hmm. IT of course, is, and technology in general is very important. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the, the credit card products, where does that sort of fit in with the overall strategy, how far is the bank able to convert credit card holders into credit card users, and is that, does that also tie in with the mm -hmm. use of uh, new channels? When you say credit cards, you probably mean salary cards for Russia, but you're saying that you need to convert credit card users, holders to credit card users. Because, um, okay, <laughs> there, are diff there is huge difference between uh, salary cards and like what we call market cards or credit cards. Because, uh, for example, for us, for credit card holders, um, the um, share of transactions uh, at point of sale is about like 70%. So it, it's, it's already there. But if you talk about salary accounts, people who just have a salary card, for them, you know, they go twice a month in the ATM, they withdraw everything, and for them it's like, you know, 80-20 by, <laughs> by the opposite way, 80% ATM transactions and 20% point of sale transactions. And, and this, is, uh, this is where we need to, um, to fight, f to fight for our share and for decreasing the share of cash. Uh, we recently launched, uh, for example, a loyalty program <coughs> called Collectia, where we offer, you know, points, VTB24 points for every transaction made not in the ATM internet transaction or point of sale transaction, whatever, but not ATM. And so people collect their points and then they can redeem these points for, uh, for um, like 4,000 different products and services right, at our website. So we built a special website and it's like an internet, uh, an internet store. So, our, and there are other ways of making people to transact more rather than just withdraw, withdraw cash. But it's, it's, a very important, it's a very important story for any bank. 
And I guess in addition to the Yeto Bank, obviously the other major development that you've had recently was the integration of TransCredit Bank into VTB24. How's that affect the business and what's the thinking again of, of bringing that into with VTB24 as the, as the main partner, if you like? The TransCredit Bank brought a lot of business for us, which is of course good. Our, it brought two million clients. Two million clients, uh, mainly these are, are employees of Russian Railways and their, their relatives and their family. And the Russian Railways is the largest employer in the country. The largest, number one. And they employ over one million people, so it's a lot. It's a country per se. And um, if you talk about these uh, clients, they are, uh, on average, they are making more than uh, other people in the same regions. And they are very loyal, and they are very low risk. So we love them. <laughs> we love them for these <laughs> three qualities. Um, it also brought us um, 260 new branches. So now our network is uh, well over 1,000. It brought us 3,000 ATMs. And our network is now well over 11,000. So and it's about 10% of our assets and 10% of our liabilities. So it's very, very healthy business that came. And they mm -hmm. plan to develop it. Of course, now, you know, the merger is not the end of the process. <laughs> it's the beginning of the process. So for us, it's now, yeah, I would say, three main tasks. We need to make sure that we cross-sell to this customer base as much as we can, that we utilize the customer base potential. Mm -hmm. Second, we need to make sure that we utilize the network potential because, of course, the range of products of ETB24 is much larger, much wider than it was for TransCredit, and the productivity is much higher. So we need to make sure that the productivity for this network is up to our standard, up to our benchmark. And third is, of course, cost synergies, which is you know sometimes sad because it's also firing people, but uh, it's important. Otherwise, it's you know otherwise the merges don't work. So, so both revenue and cost synergies are there, and then we are very happy how the process is going on so far. Not on wood. And, and finally, obviously, the, the central bank has sounded a few warnings during the course of this year about consumer credit and um, asset quality. What are your expectations for 2014 and how the market's likely to develop? For 2014, I would say I would say we are more on the optimistic uh, side. As I said, we believe that there are still opportunities for the Russian banking sector, for the retail sector to develop, and there are cert certain reasons for that. One is that there is still a big portion of population that is unbanked. We still have about 100 million people who should be banked and about 80 million people who are doing banking services, using banking services. So 20 million people are there, and that's many. There are a lot of countries who have population less than 20 million, so it's a, it's big potential. Um, second, for people who are using banking services, even if you look at affluent segment, I told you I, we did a lot of work on segmentation. So, if you look at affluent segment, 30% of them don't have a credit card. 30%. That's many. That's huge potential of increasing uh, share of wallet, of increasing banking services for these clients. And there, as I said, we believe that the share of affluent and the upper mass segment will grow, and, and it also brings more uh, more potential uh, for for banks and and for growth. The, there are also some warning signs. I was uh, signs. I would say are like, uh, you know, the problem that many people are talking about is overheating of uh, consumer finance, but there. Uh, you know, it, it happens on a certain segment, mainly like the five million people who are mostly like mass, low mass segment and who didn't understand what they were doing and who cannot assess if they properly, if they would be able to repay this loan. But uh, we have huge potential for mortgages, huge potential for mortgages and it's growing very well this year and the, the uh, um, forecast for next year is also pretty bright because the penetration for us is 4% of mortgages to GDP. If you look at Europe, you know, there is nothing less than 10. For us, it's four. Like there are countries with 20% numbers and there. So mortgages is huge potential. Um, but the worrying signs are, of course, macroeconomic conditions and the economy that is not really, you know, growing. <laughs> or um, the signs, early signs of uh, unemployment growing. We know certain regions, especially uh, in certain industries where we see certain signs for unemployment, and of course it will affect, uh, affect uh, retail business. 
But our outlook for 2014 is still positive. We predict uh, not less than 20% growth in uh, loans, 20% growth, and uh, something along, around 17% in deposits for retail. So these are still healthy numbers, nothing to complain about. Very healthy numbers. Well, thank you very much. That's been a fascinating tour of the bank, but I'm sure we may have some questions from the audience. So if you do have a question, please uh, raise your hand now. <laughs> do we have, we have a microphone coming? I have a problem looking at you yeah. because of this light. It's just like so strong. If I'm blinking or something, please forgive me. It's just really hard to look at this direction. I two questions, actually. I, hi, this is Scott UG again. Um, um, I, one question is, uh, is a continuation on the, uh, you said that the central banks said something about the, uh, the, the consumer se sector. But actually, there's, there's regulations that have been put in slow the growth of this sector. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's a more reserves and uh, higher risk weightings for certain types of consumer loans. So the question is, what will that do to your business model? Mm -hmm. Does that have any real substantial impact on it? And then the others on the affluent segment, which uh, you said would grow faster at up to 40% of total from 30. And I just wonder why, why it would grow. That has implications on income disparity in Russia or if there's some other factor that would be behind the growth in the uh, affluent segment. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the first question. Uh, yes, uh, during 2013, there were um, a couple of measures that regulator took to kind of slow down the growth of uh, um, uncollateralized consumer loans. And uh, I, I can understand why the regulator is taking these measures, because they are actually concerned about these uh, five million of people who, who are kind of, who cannot live without credit anymore. Um, it's not affecting VTB24 business in any substantial way, and the reason is very simple. We are a universal bank in retail sense. Yes, we are a retail-only bank. And it's actually amazing that VTB24 is number four bank in Russia by assets, doing just retail and nothing else. But we are a retail bank, but we are a universal retail bank. 33% of our portfolio is mortgages. 10% of our portfolio is auto lending, where, where we are number one in Russia. And the large share of our consumer loans is actually our salary accounts and corporate accounts consumer loans. Actually 60%. 60% of our consumer loans are this type of loans. They are not over 25% interest rate. So, you know, these are uh, additional reserves, they don't affect us. Uh, and uh, uh, and the, in, in general, in, in general, of course, we, we had to increase reserves in 2013 due to these regulations. I might be mistaken, but I think it, it's uh, the impact for us is about five, six, uh, five, six uh, billion rubles. But it's, um, it's completely manageable for our uh, capital adequacy ratio, completely manageable, and therefore our PL. And, and VTB Group mostly looks at um, FRS anyway, so it has no effect on FRS whatsoever. The second question there. Oh, sorry. Driving, yes, yeah. uh, what's uh, what's driving the affluent? Um, first of all, it's just more people growing from uh, upper mass to affluent, from low, uh, from mass to upper mass, and from upper mass to affluent. We predict something around 15 million people. It's just uh, overall uh, increasing GDP per capita and the wealth of the population. And uh, another factor is them buying more banking services. As I said, are uh, even, even affluent people very often just own a salary card and nothing else. So the second driver is actually increasing the penetration of banking services in this increased customer base. Thank you. So question, gentleman over there. Nassim Ali, Fruslov Bank. I have a very specific question. Bank. Можно, да? Лето банк намеревается, намеревается построить около тысячи новых отделений. Yeah. Если зайти в отделение Лето банка, оно супер современно. То есть похожих отделений даже в Европе не у многих банков да, можно найти, когда нет касс. Человек, который приходит клиент, да, приходит к операционисту, они сидят там за одним за столом и смотрят на один экран. Верите ли вы в том, что Летобанк сможет собирать депозиты? 
Хороший очень вопрос. Я не знаю, может быть, мне по-русски. What do you think? Should I respond in Russian? Should I respond in Russian? Yeah, go for it. You go for it in Russian. Uh, хороший очень вопрос. Спасибо за него. Uh, у нас uh, стратегия Робин uh, Гуда. ВТБ-24 собирает депозиты у богатых. Лето банк раздает деньги бедным. Поэтому в стратегии Лето банка и в бизнес-плане Лето банка нет депозитов. Они будут у них как продукт в своей IT-системе, они его создают, просто потому что очень тяжело сказать клиенту, а текущий счет мы тебе не откроем, а депозит мы тебе не откроем. Но мы не будем для них ставить план по депозитам и цели по депозитам. Вот в нашей стратегии, которую цели я озвучила, в тех 12% доли рынка по депозитам Летобанк стоит как ноль. Фондирует их полностью в ВТБ-24. Про отделение мне приятно, что вы так сказали, потому что когда мы это замышляли, я тогда еще была главой стратегии ВТБ-группы, и когда мы замышляли этот банк, мы хотели, чтобы он был не похож на банк. Мы хотели, чтобы у него была такая welcoming атмосфера в отделениях, и чтобы бренд был совсем не банковский, совсем другой. Они сейчас построили 270 уже точек, из той самой планируемой на 3 года 1000, развиваются, в общем-то, быстрее своих планов. Больше 20 миллиардов уже у лета всего за год существования кредитный портфель и 400 тысяч клиентов. Мне кажется, что для года существования банк проявляет себя очень хорошо. Конечно, пока они в инвестиционной фазе находятся, но мы ожидаем, что к 2015 году они будут на брейк и начнут уже приносить очень, очень приличный ROI для группы. Thank you. Um, you talked quite a lot about the, uh, the migration to digital uh, and also the importance of cross-selling and increasing um, share of wallets. Um, in the UK, that's created challenges uh, for banks to be able to cross-sell as effectively with customers who never come to a branch uh, than they, they, for those who are now just digital, uh, being able to cross-sell as effectively. How have you been able to respond to that sort of challenge? That's an excellent question because uh, we just talked uh, over the break that you know everything is going to digital. No, number of interactions is going to digital. The volumes of sales are in the branch. So I am a great believer in both. We have to combine. We have to put together a multi-channel strategy because if you don't have a physical presence, you can only compete in certain products, which is not the right path for for banks like PTB24. You cannot, or uh, you know, you cannot sell. Okay, I, I don't want to offend anyone, so <laughs> I, I would say that the volumes are still in branches, but the interactions are digital. And there are there are a couple of numbers uh, the, that I want to cite for for us. People who are using our internet bank, their product ratio, like product per person ratio, is two three times higher. They are two, three times more profitable, bring more um, operating income to us, mm. and they mm. are much more satisfied. So very easy metrics that show you when customers go digital, they, they become much better customers for you. And uh, it's also, of course, less costs for us. So it's like win, 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 win from, from everybody win situation. But for us, uh, the strategy is that we will still increase our physical presence. And Russia still has potential for increased physical presence. Because, for example, in Europe, the average number of branches per 1 million people is 470 branches. In Russia, the number is 260. And yes, of course, like we skipped checks. We can skip some of it, but we still have some potential. We moved from cash to credit cards, but we will not skip branches. So for VTB24, we plan to build about 80 new branches every year. Uh, except for 2014, it will be a little less uh, because we are transforming transcreated branches, so it's a big chunk of work. But uh, 80 branches per year we will continue to build. Uh, we do have plans for Leta Bank to increase its branch presence, but at the same time, we launched new internet bank just two weeks ago, and we are uh, launching new mobile bank by the end of this year, and we are migrating uh, a lot of customers to digital channels. To, for them to be more profitable, more satisfied, and cheaper to serve customers. Thank you very much for that. That's been uh, very interesting. I want to just remind to, to the audience to show their appreciation. Thank you for your Thank you.